What can you say? Unless you've been hiding under a rock, you're aware that Muhammad Ali, who had Parkinson's disease, passed away from septic shock this past Friday. From heavyweight champion of the world to social activist, Muhammad Ali's impact on society is immeasurable and will be studied for years to come. In the 1960s, when he changed his religion to Islam and his name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali, it was a challenge for some Americans. But around the world, it made him even a bigger hero. Join me to talk about this man's legacy and as someone who knew him well as Lance Shabazz, author of Blood, Sweat, and Tears, The Nation of Islam, and me. And also a buddy of mine, and welcome also Rashawn Shabazz, who no relation, but an old friend of mine who shares a lifelong interest in the late, great Muhammad Ali. All right, so fellas, you know, we're moving kind of quick. First, I want to give you all assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. All right, now we in the house. All right, good. I feel good now. All right, let's talk about the champ. When did he make he, he made this conversion, and who brought him in to the Nation of Islam? Because the story out there, it's Malcolm X. Everyone says it was Malcolm X, so. Malcolm X, Mike, thank you, and welcome, uh, thank you. Um, Muhammad Ali accepted the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He first visited a Muslim mosque in Miami, Florida, Muhammad's Mosque, number 29. Uh, the minister there was a minister named Jesse. Uh, I got this firsthand from uh, his blood brother who told me this, uh, Brother Rockman. He visited in the early 60s, and Jesse, Brother Minister Jesse, was the one that he first heard the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The captain of the mosque at that time was Brother Captain Samuel, known today as Minister Abdul Rahman, and they were the ones who brought him in. Malcolm X is more sexy to say Malcolm X brought him in, but no, that's not accurate. Mm -hmm. The relationship he had also with Elijah Muhammad. Well, he no, would be the authority on that subject. All right. Um, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, um, after uh, Muhammad Ali accepted the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he, uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad bestowed the name on him. Through a national broadcast, March 6th of 1964, he gave him the name Muhammad Ali. Muhammad meaning one worthy of praise, Ali meaning the most high. Ali accepted the name. He said that he, he said he was going to sign autographs by that name. He wanted to be known by that name. And he did make the name famous. His brother, Rahman, also received the name. And Rahman told me the Ambi Elijah Muhammad went upstairs, came down and wrote it out for him. He said, this is the way you spell it, with the A on it. And he said, he said it was the greatest day of his life receiving that name from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And so, yes, Muhammad Ali, once he accepted the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he, I, you know, you, you know when, you, when they do the bio about him being born ca from Cassius, um, Marcellus Clay mm -hmm. Sr. and Odessa Clay from on the 300 block of Grand mm -hmm. Avenue in Louisville, Kentucky, all of that is good. But he accepted the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and became Muhammad Ali, and that's when he really began to take off. All right. When did you first became aware of Muhammad Ali? Uh, I mean, because we always used to box, right, in, in, in Staten yeah, Island? And I mean, we grew up, uh, you know, there was no bigger sports figure. Uh, even if boxing wasn't your favorite sport, there was no bigger figure than Muhammad Ali uh, in the community, uh, throughout America, for black people. There was no bigger figure than Muhammad Ali. Um, I can remember, I, I would say, around the early 60s, uh, when I was cognizant of the fact of what sports was uh, in the home f from a boxing standpoint, it was Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you also have to look at the influence he had. And, and back then, in the 60s and the 70s, I mean, we had all types of heroes. I mean, basically, you had Jim Brown. You had, you even had uh, Fred Williamson, John, you know, Richard Roundtree and Shaft. You had men that you could really, really look up to and emulate. I mean, today, unfortunately, they, it's just not there. Um, let's look at also the name change. How did the name change change his perspective and also other folks' perspective on it. Well, he, as he said, Cassius Clay was a, a slave name. Mm -hmm. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave him a, what we consider a holy name. Muslims, as, as once you joined the Nation of Islam, as you know, you went through a process and then you received an X. As you know, uh, you know, many mm -hmm. are familiar with Malcolm X. The X, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, mean that you are no longer a slave. So when you divorce, when a man divorces his wife, she becomes his ex-wife. Mm -hmm. So we were divorcing ourselves from white America, so we became X. So if your last name was Walker, you became Lance X, you know, Walker. Mm -hmm. Whatever your name was, he said those names that the, the, the slave master gave us didn't represent anything. There are folks out there saying that Cassius Marcellus Clay was not necessarily a slave name. I mean, Bob Costas, uh, there have been other folks in the mainstream media have been stating this. And also, 
Are we seeing an attempt to whitewash Muhammad Ali? Oh, mm -hmm. definitely. Definitely <laughs> trying to whitewash. They're trying to sanitize Muhammad Ali. When he stopped speaking, basically, publicly, others started reshaping and managing. Just the same way they did with um, Malcolm X, they did with Muhammad Ali. And uh, I, I believe this is by design. If you remember, 1975, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad departed from us. Mm -hmm. That was Muhammad Ali's last greatest fight was in 1975 with Joe Frazier. Thrill in Manila, right? Thrill in Manila. Mm -hmm. After that, he fought uh, Yankee Stadium, uh, Ken, uh, Norton. Ken Norton, mm -hmm. September the 28th. He fought uh, in Landover, Maryland. He, right. you know, he Jimmy fought Young. Jimmy Young, Ernie April Shafers. 30th. He fought uh, in Madison Square Garden with Ernie Schaefer's. And all those fights, you know, he didn't have the same spirit. He was fighting for a cause. When, he be when you become a Muslim and you become a, uh, the FOI, Fruit of Islam, the name given to training the men who belong to Islam in North America, it changes you. Muhammad Muhammad Ali had the whole thing on his shoulder. They said he changed his name, that he uh, refused to go. He didn't refuse to go because of that. He said that he would rather stand and face machine gun fire before he denounced Elijah Muhammad in the Nation of Islam. But they don't tell you that. The three and a half years. Yes. Here, as I look at it, a lot of folks say, you know, what about if he had those three and a half years? He would have been this, he would have been that. I think, in my opinion, because of those three and a half years, it gave him a larger platform on which to speak on issues, and he became bigger than boxing and bigger than sports. So, in a way, those three and a half years were a gift to him and his career. It's good you, you say three and a half years. Mm -hmm. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad's teacher, Master Farah Muhammad, was among them for three and a half years. That was a preparation period. Muhammad Ali, during that three and a half years, married Sister Belinda, uh, who became Sister Khalil Ali during that time in August of 67. He married uh, Sister Belinda. So his, his perspective, once you get married, he had his daughter, uh, May May, in 68. Once you start having um, a, a family, you start to mature. She helped him with his speaking engagements. He went around to all of the colleges and universities. Mm -hmm. She helped do all of that. She was the foundation. And remember, he was, didn't have much money then. True. As you know the story, right, they right. said Joe, um, uh, Joe Frazier had Joe helped Frazier, him with right. it. But no, the Honorable <clears throat> Elijah Muhammad had, was giving him money as well. No, they state that, the, you know, I'm hearing stories that the Muslims weren't giving him any money. He was giving money to the Muslims. We have it, and you can go on YouTube, mm -hmm. and my, from his own words, Muhammad Ali said, I owe them money. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad was giving him money and helping him. That's why he, he took the name back temporarily when he said, went before the public and said he, he only way he would go back to boxing is because is he wanted to get a little money. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that you saying that Allah was not sufficient enough to take care of you? And I believe personally, and I, you know, I know it's not a popular thing to say, but I believe that Muhammad Ali received a chastisement when you saw him trembling and going through all of that. And I love Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. This was my hero. Yeah. I named my son after Muhammad Ali. My my wife had to say she has the same birthday with Muhammad Ali. That was he was very instrumental. He said he was being also punished yes. by Allah because of his, you know, refusing. Once you. You know, when you make a covenant with God, when you write a Savior's letter, you, you make a covenant with him. He accepted the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and then he turned his back. As soon as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad departed, you know, there was others wrangling, right. pulling him in different directions, and they pulled him away. I asked his brother Rahman about, mm -hmm. about a year and a half ago. I said, are any Muslims around your brother now? He couldn't think of one. Mm -hmm. So he's being sanitized. His present wife, the photographer who they mm -hmm. said is his best friend, right. none of them are Muslims. Right. They're not Muslims. This ceremony that they're giving tomorrow or, or Friday, a Friday that, that's not a Muslim funeral. What did you first become? We, we met Muhammad Ali. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, we met Muhammad Ali. It was 1973, I believe yep, it, was it was in like July. July. Yep. You stayed with me the whole day yep. to, uh, I mean, we waited outside the whole day to meet Muhammad Ali. At the Paramount Ali. Theater, Staten Paramount Island. Paramount Theater, Street. Staten Island, Bay Street. And uh, I, it's, it's, it's a day, uh, as long as I have my faculties, that I will never forget because it was a monumental day for me. Um, Muhammad Ali was a, a big influence as far as Islam is concerned, as far as my whole ideology and thought process in being a black man here in America, um, you know, he is the impetus that has connected me to other great leaders Islamically. And, you know, it, it, it's just been a tremendous impact it, on it, my life. It was a beautiful day. I remember because I got a chance to box with him, right? And, that, and we also yes, went upstairs, did. ate some sandwiches. I mean, we, got, we he, all had free stuff. And I said, man, this is the life. This is the life I want to live. He picked us out of stuff. the crowd. I, you know, I knew bringing those red boxing gloves was going to get me in because he, you know, at the time, most boxers had black boxing gloves. He had red boxing gloves. So when I got an opportunity to get my own pair of gloves, I, I, I wanted red boxing gloves. 
emulating Ali, and he picked us out of the crowd, and we got to have a personal moment mm -hmm. uh, with Ali, where it was a, a, a tremendous crowd. Nah. But he picked us out of the crowd to hang out with him. And he kissed my sister. My sister passed out. She yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the chant. <laughs> Last words. A few seconds. All right. I, I just want to say this. Muhammad Ali told me this on the phone, a conversation that I had with him. He said, Brother Lance, Lonnie is the test. My wife is the test. This is what he said to me. I believe he said that, that she didn't want to, uh, or she was preventing him from seeing his children. I want to see my children, he said. This is what he said. So you could take it for whatever it is. You could say it's Parkinson. Maybe that did contribute to it, but there was other things that's involved in it. And I, that's my personal opinion. Spiritual force to see the picture of uh, Abdul Jabbar, Minister Farrakhan, Joe Muhammad Tex. Ali, and Joe Tex. Huh? Yes. I got you. That's right. All right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's right. All, All right. Muslims. All right. All right. Cool. Well, fellas, thanks for coming. Man. Thank you. It's a real blessing. Yes, Blood, yes, Sweat, and Tears, the book is available. Yes, sir. Blood, uh, you Blood, can order it online. Right. There it is, right here. Amazon.com, Kindle Books. Uh, you can get it anywhere. All right. Lulu.com. Uh, right. Thank you, brother. Thank you. All right. Salam alaikum.